Hey guys, it's Erica and Jess. Welcome back to Twin Aura Knits. We are here today to talk to you about knitting, crochet, yarn, and projects. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first? Do I want to go first? I think you should go first. Okay, so um, technically it's not finished finished because I it's haven't finished. woven in my ends, but the knitting portion's done. And I am wearing the only murders in the building sweater designed by Cheryl for Knit Collage. Um, technically, this is going to be a pattern releasing in the fall, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Yes. In my thinking. Yes. Um, but they started it off as a... They did it as a workshop through the Creative Knitters group, which I am a member of. Yes. So Erica was so nice enough to let me... Um, borrow the class because I saw this sweater or a version of the sweater on Cheryl. Cheryl. And first it was Cheryl at Rhinebeck. Yes. Second, it was Cheryl and Amy at VKL. And I was full hype. I want to be just like Cheryl. Cheryl is the coolest person in the world. Yes, she and really is. She really is. I freaking love her so much. And I came home from VKL. Full hype. Full hype. And I gathered all of my things together and I casted it on very shortly after, I believe. Right? Oh. I don't know. I, time. What, what is, is time? it? It's an illusion. Um, but so most of these chunky stripes are made out of either knit collage or hand spun that I spun myself. And I've used bats from, I'm just going to throw out some names here. Green Goat Ranch, Melanated Boho Bay, Bad Ass String, um, Will Willow Fiber Co. I don't know if she's still doing stuff or not. Um, but I'm just really excited because these were my first hand spuns that I've ever spun in my life. Hand spun yarn that you spun. Yes, thank you. I'm like, I'm really excited about it. So like, words, what do they mean? Um, and I also took all of my leftover mohair and held them together to get the gauge that I needed and um, some of Erica's because she was kind enough to let me use red um, to make this amazing like fading pattern or colorway for every single stripe so every time it like changes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, you have to knit yours. I know, I do. Like, I have the yarn for it. It'll be done. I hope to get it done for Rhinebeck. Yeah, for we can. Rhinebeck weekend. Yeah, so we can wear them together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Actually, I might do that too. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to make a list. And, and check it gonna, twice. And check it twice and I'm going to do that. Because I'm thinking, how cute would my only murders in the building sweater be with my vintage navy blue uh, 1940s slip. Oh, yes. You know? It'd be so cute. Yeah, yeah, It'd for sure. It'd be so cute. See, sometimes you have to have the thing to motivate you to, to finish knit. the knit or to even start it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, and this goes really quickly. I know it does. I just have a lot to process. Yeah, girl. That takes me a minute. I feel that. Um, so my first finished object, if you remember last time I was talking about this book Close Knit by Lark Bagger mm -hmm. and I was starting on the cute top and I used the bad idea dress mm -hmm. technique so I use this as my inspiration with my yarns and I was using leftover yarns from my find your fade what the fade little bits and bobs that I had um, I had stuff from cake from wandering flock from Hedgehog Fibers, from La Bien Ami, Trey Liz, I used them all. Mm -hmm. And this- And it's so cute. Is the cutest little top. I know. I love it. I it, do too. It's some of my favorite colors. I love this pattern. I feel like this is an Erica, like these are like all of your colors. I feel like this is like uh, ge geological sediment yes. of what is inside of me. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like, if you were to cut me open in half, 
this is what you would find with silver glitter at the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a cute idea top. It does have a little bit of waist shaping, which mm -hmm. I really like. It kind of fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. I still have a ton of yarn left from this project, mm -hmm. and I kind of want to make a matching set. I have the Jessie May So Summer shorts, mm -hmm. and I want to do this technique with that short pattern so I can have a matching set. It's going to look so cute. To me, this looks and kind of reminds me of the stuff that the Elder Statesman mm -hmm. is putting out. Mm -hmm. So I might... You know what? I might do I might do a short and I might do a pant. Ooh. So because I have so much left and I'm yeah. striping it, that's plenty. Yeah, for sure. So there is that. I just love it. These these are like oh my yeah. favorites. So good. I'm like, I can't wait to knit that. Do you wanna talk about your next finished object? Which one should I do first? Okay. We're gonna talk about this half and half. So I casted it on when Katie Jacks Knits was doing the half and half wrap cowl mm -hmm. way back in 2021. And it took me three years to knit it all. <laughs> but it's done, guys, look! Ah! I love it, it's great. Um, the colors I used were neon orange and a robin's egg blue in linen quill for Pearl Soho. Yes. And girl, I'm just so glad that it's over. I cannot wait to style it up. I feel like it's gonna be a staple in my wardrobe. It's one of my favorite shawls to wear. Erica wears hers all the time because this has been with me for so much of my life. Like actively working on it. Yeah that I'm like, it's bittersweet that it's over, but I am glad that I no longer have to like, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> I'm glad I no longer have, have to, to look, look at it. it. <laughs> as oh a God. project, as a, as a, you know, work in progress, unfinished object. You had me, that's, you, that's funny. I mean, seriously, I still have to weave in the ends because once I was done knitting it, I was like, I can't. It needs to sit in time out. Well, it's done. It is done. So that's it. You're done. I'm done. I'm done. It happened. Oh, I never thought this day would come. Did you? No. Me either. But I did set a goal last time that I wanted to get it done before October and it is done. So I'm very happy about that. The end. So talking about projects that took us forever to finish, mm -hmm. I also did a project that was supposed to be done in 2021 because there was also a meetup. Mm -hmm. um, and then all this stuff happened and I had no motivation to work on it. And when I say all this stuff, I mean other knit-alongs. I mean other projects. I mean Rhinebeck sweaters take priority over everything and everything gets pushed back. True. Test knits that I just was dying to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And this poor little thing took forever to get done. Oh, but it's so good. And this year I decided was the year that I would finish my Ziggy Interrupted. Yes. So this is yarn by Christina Chelsea Yarns. Mm -hmm. This is my 2021 Cozy Cabin Advent with Beach Minis mm -hmm. interspersed in between the stripes. Yep. Do you want? Yeah, so we're gonna do, sits. we're just gonna do a little, like, a little pan a crawl. So this, I decided I was just gonna do it all. I was just, this was just gonna be done. It just needed to be done. I needed it off my desk. I needed it off my mind. Mm -hmm. I just needed it to be done. Yeah. So I can A, wear it and B, feel like I could continue on in in my making journey in my making journey because yeah. I have other projects that I want to make using my advents and I felt like well I started using an advent and I should finish that before I move to anything else that's how I felt about this project yeah so it's I know there's no rules 
and we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. And if I want to have 157,000 whips and never work on them again, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just had to have something done. Mm -hmm. And I also think that that helped me move through my weird knitting mojo slump. Yes! So I've been kind of like hemming and hawing about a lot of things and I mm -hmm. haven't been as productive, but taking care of your mental health is important mm -hmm. and not knitting at all gave me the space. the space that I needed to even pick up something like this, which was crochet. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I had the motifs, this set of motifs done. If you look at an old podcast, yeah, I just had this set of motifs done and nothing else. So I literally had the whole four panels projects. to do and it took a long time. But you worked on it very I, quickly. I know. I took it with me when I went to visit our grandparents in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I got most of this work done mm -hmm. while we were sitting with them, eating dinner, while we were talking, while we were watching TV. It was the perfect project um, to bring with me because it was done in smaller sections. Mm -hmm. And it was bite-sized enough where I felt like... I could progress and take a break and not feel like I've just abandoned this huge project. Right. It's nice that it's done in sections because of that. Yeah. I also did party tassels. I so, love those tassels. So what I did was I literally grabbed one string of every yarn that I had in, you know, the rest of the scarf. And I made my tassels. Mm -hmm. And I really like how it turned out because I think it just looks more cohesive. So, yeah. like, my ends are kind of pinky and bluey. Mm -hmm. And the inside is a little bit more orange and blue and green. Yeah. And this kind of ties it all in together. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It's so good. We should congratulate ourselves for finishing a three and a half year project. I know, we should. You did a good job. You did too. <laughs> so, another project that has been <laughs> taking an eternity um, that I recently just finished. If you follow me on Instagram, you already know. But if you don't, Stephen West Shawlography, baby. Um, so many thoughts. So many mistakes. So many, like, eh, it's fine. He says just to fudge it. So, um... It's done, guys. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's done. No, but seriously. <laughs> um, I Once I actually picked up this project, I thoroughly enjoyed working on it. Um, mm -hmm. I loved working with all of the colors that I did. I know they're very similar, especially like the pink and the peach are very similar. But that gives me something in my head that I just kind of love. Um, and I also love the detail of the main color and the brioche matching. I feel like it brings the whole entire piece together. And then instead of doing those giant stripes, because I just couldn't anymore, let's mm -hmm. just be real, because um, I just wanted it to be done, I did a beautiful Pico, Pico edge that I totally stole from my friend Sarita. Mm -hmm. because she did hers and hers had a nice little pico bind off and it is super cute so cute so i'm like um i hope you don't mind but i'm gonna take this idea because i don't just want a regular i cord mm -hmm. i definitely want something a special little bit more decorative yeah so that's what i did because i knew from the get that i did not want to do those giant stripes once everybody finished everything i was like pass i don't want to do that i don't want all of that knitting um so yeah, so this came out more like a chalette, and I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. I definitely still have to block it, but... I think once you block it, it'll relax a little bit. Yeah. And this is my first time really, like, doing brioche and doing brioche well and fixing my mistakes as I came to them. So I was really excited about that. Look at how beautiful it looks. I'm like, ugh, it was just so nice and squishy. So, my, my last finished object it's is... A pair of socks, a pair of scrappy socks, 
They are my scrappy socks. Mm -hmm. This is a different version of the Karma socks. And this is what I consider my version of the Lavender Haze colorway. colorways. So that I had just enough scrappy, scrappy bits to make this sock. I kind of played a little bit with my motif here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a slip stitch. I don't know if I'm going to include that in the pattern or not because you can't really tell here because I have so much speckly yarn. Mm -hmm. But if you had solid, you would see it more. Yeah. Um, but this is the Karma Sock and I am... I'm really excited. Looking, I'm <laughs> looking for testers. So if you're interested, uh, let me know down below. Mm -hmm. I'm just really excited. I've been knitting these socks like you wouldn't believe. They are some of my favorites. I know. To knit. Can you believe it? Can we just have a moment for growth? First podcast, I said I hated it and I would never knit socks again. Mm -hmm. And here I am designing my own pattern. So we briefly mentioned we went to South Carolina to visit mm -hmm. our grandparents. They live close enough to Black Mountain. So we went to Black Mountain Yarn. Mm -hmm. We did get little pouches from when Amy from La Bien and Me was there. They had them still, so I grabbed one of those. I know, I'm excited. For what? I don't know, but I needed it in my life. I did grab some sock yarn. I had them wind it for me because I thought I would cast it on immediately. But this is the Mondim, mm. Mondim um, non-superwash sock yarn. And I wanted to make some bright yellow socks because I thought they would be fun to pair with all sorts of things. Oh, for sure. So I'm. Um, this is the La Bien Ami, Amy's Yellow Mondim colorway. Then I was looking at Black Mountain's samples and they had the For the Frills crochet pattern on display which I tried on and immediately fell in love with mm -hmm. and it's a crochet pattern. Erica's a crocheter now guys. I know who would have thought? Not me. Not me. Not <laughs> me at all. Um, so with Renee's help from Black Mountain I picked out this Lavender Loon colorway. It's called Poppy. It's in it's a DK weight because the pattern calls for DK weight. Um, and I'm gonna make this cute little ruffly frilly tank. And That'll be I cute. I'm really excited. It's in my favorite color. It matches my lipstick, Lady Danger from MAC. Mm -hmm. So, I was pretty good. I also got a sweatshirt and a t-shirt. Me too. And a crochet hook to crochet. I did not get the crochet hook. I did and pick up, it. I did pick up Amy, Amy's book in Neons and Neutrals. Um, we looked at it and flipped through it at VKL and I immediately knew that I wanted a copy. I wanted a copy because I, I love the idea of like having this contrast between a pop of color and a neutral because I need to learn how to work with neutrals because mm -hmm. I'm not really a neutral kind of girl. So having that nice pop of color and a guide to do that with I was like, yes, please. Lastly, I picked up the Even Tide Black Mountain Yarn Spin Cycle colorway. Um, I originally was going to use this as my last color for the Shift Shawl um, by Andrea Mowry, but then she came out with Tessellated, um, the pullover and the vest option. So then I ended up thinking that I would use this as uh, one of three colors for the body of it. Um, for a sweater, either for Rhinebeck or just for the fall. I haven't quite decided what I was going to do, but it's all set to go. I just need to wind everything up and cast it on. Um, I'm really excited. It's really pretty. It looks completely different than what Erica has in her stone crop because mm -hmm. she got this color for her stone crop. Um, for her birthday cast on two years ago. Two or three, Two yeah. or three years ago. I'm like, oh, I love that. That sweater was awesome, too. Thank you. You're welcome. But I'm really excited. I've never really worked with Spin Cycle before. I've never worked <laughs> with Spin Cycle before. And I'm really excited just to see how, like, it works and how it knits up. Um, it's an interesting yeah. thing to do. Yeah. Because, because you've, do moves, you've yeah. done it. So the, col the colors do shift. Yeah. I've done I'm it like, with that color. I'm like, white. look at that. Look at that. It's nice. 
Like, it's completely different from the inside versus the outside. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. And I'm really excited to actually work with this and see how it goes. Just because I've never worked with it, I would, I'm really interested to see how the colors shift. Yeah, it's a s slow gradient. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we got in the mail um, the Aurora colorway from Fashion School Dropout. This is the colorway that she had debuted for the Makers Gathering at Forever Yarn in Doylestown. Mm -hmm. And the color sold out super quick, and then she had, like, a pre-order online. Mm -hmm. And I was obsessed. I uh, saw it in person, obviously, and was like, I died dead. I need <laughs> this. I needed this. I love the two different colors of minis. And, and the base. There's just something about, like, this, like, I'm just gonna, I love that she's going on this, like, Stevie Nicks, Daisy Jones, and the Six, like, mm -hmm. 70s rocker, like, Laurel Canyon Hills vibe, which, as you can see, I love. <laughs> My, I also feel like these ones specifically are like, like she did this one for the Makers Gathering this mm -hmm. year. She did Harry Styles last year. I have them both. And I feel like they're collector's items and that I can't use them. I feel that way too. Do you know what I mean? Like, I hoard Kelly's yarn. I know. I have, I have it's so many. It's kind of a problem. Yeah, I have so many Fashion School Dropout sock sets that I'm scared to mm -hmm. use. So Bo Boleros had a Barbie drop. She had a Barbie release, and with that Barbie release, she had a Barbie bubble cowl. We so talked cute. about it before. We got the yarn in. Yes, so and it's oh, not Margaret. It's Margaret from Bo Boleros, mm -hmm. and it's. I decided to go for a little pop of pink and some neutrals. I went full Barbie dream house. I know. I love the full Barbie dream house. I... I'm obsessed with Barbie. Like, who isn't these days? But, like, full hype, dude. I bought the Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. I bought the lipstick. Yep. I bought the nail polish, the tangle tweezer, everything. Everything that Barbie, I ha I needed it. It's a problem. It's so, not a problem. It's not, but, yeah, let's not shame ourselves mm -mm. because we're reliving our girlhood. Let's not do that. Yeah. Um... So I am just, I'm in love with it, and it just tickles my little inner child that I needed to relive it in yarn. And I'm so excited to make this bubble cowl, like, I honestly. I enjoyed wearing hers for the split 20 seconds that I had it on my body, yeah. and I couldn't wait to make my own. I know. So she graciously gifted us this kit. And I cannot wait to make mine. I cannot wait to show you guys. I can't wait to photograph it. I know. I can't wait to wear it at cake. I know. Like, I straight up told her, I'm like, ah, uh, you wait. I'm going to probably have it done for cake. Because I feel like this will be a super quick knit. Oh, yeah. So, you know, on top of all of our Ryan Beck knitting that we will talk about some other time. So... You can find us at Twin Aura Knits on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'm Waffle Belgium on Instagram and on Ravelry. I'm It's Jess Bell on Instagram. I'm Indie Dash Darling on Ravelry. I'm also It's Jess Bell on TikTok because I TikTok. Yeah, I'm Waffle Belgium anywhere you want to find me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that is everything. We will see you again in the next one. Same nitty time. Same nitty channel. Bye, Bye guys. guys.